Hello everyone, this is a CAD video uh, about a project that I'm wanting to do. It's a little bit experimental, but I've seen one other person do something very, very similar to this. And when I say very similar, I mean my original design and their design that they posted, including the, the dimensions, were almost identical. Um, my my execution I've changed a little bit since seeing since seeing his YouTube video. I'll put a link to his video. I don't speak Portuguese, so I can't actually understand what he's saying, but I can understand what he's showing, which is um which is great. Uh, but what what this video is all about is a hydraulic tool post that uses a um, a master piston, which is this part here that's sort of flickering in bluey, grayish, white. Um, a master, a master cylinder driven uh, with a master piston inside it. This is filled up with hydraulic fluid, and it drives this slave piston, which is highlighted here. So when the piston goes down, the um, the master piston comes forwards and it should reverse back out too. I'm anticipating there to be a heck of a lot of holding force, um, probably more than what I'll actually need. And the reasoning behind this is because the master piston is only eight millimeters in diameter. So it travels quite a fair bit to, to raise some sort of pressure inside the cylinder. But that pressure is now distributed over a very large surface area by comparison. It's over this 30 millimeter diameter here, which is like an inch and a quarter. So for, for those playing along in the US, um, 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter here, one inch and a quarter over on the master side, that's a, that's a fairly large um, difference in diameters and because it's a, an area that dictates what happens with pressures um, we, we wind up squaring it so that large difference then gets squared um, so that high pressure is acting across a large area to produce a lot of force at least that's what I'm hoping I'm hoping to see a lot of clamping force without very much torque required around this screw um, the, this this little screw handle up the top here um, and adding to that this is a thread so it's not a lot of torque going around a thread to produce immense holding force like a small screw can produce sort of like j just like a six millimeter or quarter inch screw um, can hold I don't know like one or two tons of clamping force is what it can provide I think um, I'll I'll put like a little card with a correction to that um, if if it's not quite right but yeah you can get you can get a lot of holding uh, a lot of clamping force from a screw and that's going into a piston that then hopefully there's this amplifying effect because of the the sheer difference in surface area across the front of the master cylinder uh, across the front of the master piston versus the uh, the slave piston um, so I'm, I'm expecting it to, to clamp quite rigidly. A couple of other neat little features about this. My friend Emma has a multi-fix tool post, or a Chinese version of the uh, Swiss multi-fix, and that allows you to rotate the tool post around. Um, it allows you to rotate the tool post around, and why isn't the tool post can get rotated around and locked into 40 different positions. And so what I've decided to do here is put in this plate called, which I'm nicknaming the clamping plate. Um, maybe detent plate is a little better for, uh, is a slightly better term for it. But the, the plate has all these divots and the ball, which is pictured here, can click into those, those little divots and provide some sort of tactile feedback for when you're setting the angle of the tool post. It, it allows you to set the position of the tool post relatively quickly and then just on on the, the multi-fix you just pull the lever to lock the cam in. On mine it will have 
not quite as fast, but you just simply loosen or tighten this nut, and that'll push down on the um, that'll push down on the washer, which then pushes down on the the tool post, which has a large surface area on the bottom. So hopefully that generates a lot of friction, so the tool won't move around, the tool post won't rotate around too much when encountering any force. Tool holders here are going to be for half inch half inch high speed steel and carbide tool holders. I'm going to actually make the slot 13 millimeters wide so just a smidge over um, just a smidge over half inch that way tools can actually be slid in quite easily and I might also make a 5 8 one for like a knurl tool because I don't see a lot of um, knurl tools take well have a half inch uh, have a half inch shank on them so that's um that's probably something that's going to be kind of useful there and the height adjusts like most of the other piston and wedge style dovetail tools that you just adjust this brass nut here with your thumbs and then tighten it up with an allen key there uh, sorry a hex wrench there the the other thing that i think would be really valuable is something to hold a drill chuck um, I've seen a couple of people using the the drill chucks in their tool post and I've always wondered how do you get that on center and I'm thinking for for spotting and center holes I could probably use the tailstock for that um, but for drilling much deeper I can probably use a DRO and just set that that offset correctly the first time and then be done with it. Um, it's probably not a big deal actually uh, to just dial into zero on a DRO and boom on center. Uh, so yeah being able to drill deep holes and also to be able to use power feed whilst drilling might actually improve the surface finish. This holder is 16 millimeters or about 5 eighths so I could probably also hold some boring bars with that. Um, maybe I'll make up a smaller one for my machine, because my machine's not a big one, it, it probably doesn't need a 16mm uh, shaft for a boring bar, but maybe maybe half inch or 12.7mm for a boring bar is actually a sensible size, and so that could go in there and um, clamp up, so I might make up two or three different sizes of um, what I've nicknamed a chuck holder, but yeah. Uh, the size of the clamping plate, just for scale, is 75 by 75 millimeters, or about three inch by three inch. I'm I'm expecting I'm not expecting a great tool post to be coming out of this, but I'm expecting something reasonable. I'm expecting something good as opposed to borderline adequate, which is what I've currently got. It's it does the job, but it could be so much better. I'm expecting this to do the job, to do it well, and I expect improvement, uh, ex improvements could be made, but I'm expecting it to do the job a lot better than, than what I've currently got. So there's, there's a fair few operations in doing this, um, and I was planning on making a small CAD series of videos about how to use Fusion to, um, take well I was planning on doing some so a, a video on the maths behind the forces and the calculations and the volume of fluid here and the distances to travel inside this this cylinder and the master cylinder I was planning on doing a video on maths about that and I was also planning on doing uh, a series of videos on the design constraints and then how to design around design constraints I know that there's a lot of videos about how to use Fusion 360. I know that there's a lot of videos about how to um, machine stuff, but I'm not sure there's a lot of videos on taking constraints and applying it to a design. And I think that could be something that's sort of, I'm hoping that would be something that people are interested in. Um, and if so, let me know in the comments so that I know how to gear these videos to be a little better. Um, most of these videos I, I have generally designed for um, FRC teams um, 
well, some specific FRC teams, but if that's not what people are interested in, then um, I might consider changing the, the line of approach a little. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching.